So, are you really sure that these plans will work? Why? Do you not trust me? Well, it's not that I don't trust you, it's just that I'm not sure what you're talking about by this. It just doesn't seem right. You're going to try and take control of the city's power? Yeah, think about it. If we control the city's power, then they would have to listen to us. But at the same time, you're going to be turning off hospitals. No, they're going to be running on emergency power. And those generators. Besides, you got it all wrong. This won't put a lot of humans in serious harm. Some of them, hopefully, will have electricity-based cork, so they will be told to run the hospitals. you got to think about this. I mean, yeah, but still, that plan does seem a little bit crazy. What if something goes wrong? By the way, I think you're overthinking things. Now, Momo does walk into the room, simply saying that Eto usually has a plan all planned out. And if it does go wrong, then hell. They're simply just going to have to fight their way out. And with their people... It won't be that much of a thing. All they really need to do is bust one of those turbines. Or, at least break a couple cords. And that will send the heroes and many of the CCG members away. Besides, once those suits run out of power, we basically have the upper hand. They need to charge their briefcases, charge everything they have. They rely too much on that technology. You're right. Alright, well then, I guess I'm finally meeting Amari face to face again. You do know that he is very dangerous. Yeah, I know. Now, hello, hello everybody. This is Kiru's show here, and this is three years ago. This is the plan to fight against the humans. The plan that they spent so long organizing, and amassing numbers for. Now, this is going to be quite difficult, especially since I'm sort of building this timeline as I'm going along. Now, let us begin. We will start with the One-Eyed King, the one who wears Midoriya's face. In the current time, where he is 21 to 22 years old, or 20 to 21 years old, he just woke up from a dream, and he is beginning to have a little bit of flashbacks. Whatever that was that felt different, they were doing something. Was that the operation? Was that a glimpse of what happened? It felt real, but it also didn't feel real at the same time. That didn't feel like he was talking. So, he simply just shrugs it off and heads on to his way. As he's going to meet with Eto and Momo for breakfast. Since usually they're up at this time and he sleeps in usually a bit of an hour later. Now, whenever he does actually walk in, they do see him and ask him how he slept, to which his only response is that it could have been better, but he just keeps having these weird glimpses, to which both of them just simply look at each other, and ask him exactly what are the glimpses about, to which he just explains something about a plan involving controlling the city's power, both of them just staring directly at him, and saying that it was quite simple and easy. However, the plan sort of went wrong. Momo then sitting down and setting down a piece of meat in front of Midoriya. As she does actually get him a cup of coffee. And go on saying that they are going to go out today and actually make a bit of a sale. They're going to find some humans that they can auction off on the black market or at least in the underworld, for ghouls. Momo's family's assets have all been frozen. 
So this is how Argyri has been using and making money. In fact, they're going to try and capture one of those half ghouls. If they can take one in and capture it, then that's going to be it. The money that some ghouls are willing to pay for them is enough to almost set you for a lifetime. However, those Quink Squad members, as they've been called, or at least that's what the CCG calls them, they are simply just fake ghouls. Imitations of Midoriya and Eto. Now, Midoriya does begin to eat. As let us cut back to those three years ago. Midoriya, he is simply getting ready. And in three, two, one. As all the power in the city blacks out all at once. And Midoriya is sitting there at the top of a building. Bringing his hand up and clicking down a detonator. The buildings he's blowing up have no civilians or even people around them. One of them was already set for de being demolished by a construction company. While the other two, yeah, they were either being fumigated for pest or simply did not have anyone nearby them. They were work buildings that were empty for the night. Hopefully. Even if there were casualties, they would have known about it. Since Midoriya was told that there would be no one in them, so he listened. Trusting in his friends, or I guess you could say his girls. Now, Midoriya was getting ready and simply waiting for the CCG. As many people do look in the top of a building and see something fall off of it. Many of them going to call 911. Zbidoria smashes directly into the ground and stands up. In his giant owl like form. And simply looking around. As many people do see him. Now, he is going to be causing a bit of a commotion. While Eto and Momo and some of their other lower ranking ghoul members the A-Class, are taking over the power plants. And with the fact that the Owl is making an appearance again, then this means that it's going to be very bad. Now, Yoshimura is waiting on the rooftop. Once Midori begins to have trouble, he's supposed to jump in and cause his own commotion nearby. So, this plan better be working out. He's only going along with it because he doesn't want his daughter to get hurt. Now, this is where the CCG are deployed. And they all immediately go after the owl, unaware as to what is going on. Now, Midori begins to fight off the CCG as he moves at amazing speeds and begins to fight them off and attack with them. Midoriya quickly being able to dismantle the ones in the white dove suits, the standardized outfit instead of the battle coat, or the Ataro armor. Being able to quickly just backhand one whenever it tried to go for a heavy hit on his left arm. Being able to pick the man up and immediately just smash him into the ground before tossing him through a building. The man probably will not survive that. If he does, he is going to be in very bad shape. Now, Midoriya begins to fight off the CCG. Ataru members quickly showing up and beating their assault on Midoriya. Midoriya quickly having his arms and part of his legs lashed at. As they're trying to go for tacticality and fight him off trying to go for his weak points. The points that would make it harder for him to move if he was in heavier forms of armor. Now, Midoriya simply creates his Ukaku. As soon as it's created, the CCG are directly behind him, 
as they were going about to go down and slash directly into his back, cutting off one of those wings before they completely turn solid and begin to fire spikes backwards at the CCG members before Midoriya's tail, or at least a few of them, emerge from his waist, directly in his tailbone. They simply just shoot upwards and begin to fly through the air, one of them quickly impaling one man, as another one can be seen moving throughout the air. It's almost hypnotic the way it's moving. It looks like it has its own free will from the other one, as it stabs through a man's leg and then quickly moves upwards into the guy's arm being able to stab him directly through his wrist as he drops his quink's weapon, before hitting another man in the gut directly behind him. As these tails smash the men together before smashing them directly into the ground. And Midoriya's Kukaku, or the waist kagune, is what is wrapping around his body, keeping him in this lightweight form of armor as he's simply beginning to think for a minute. The CCG are deploying two little men. As he brings his finger up to his ear and clicks onto the earpiece, asks them how they're going over there. As they all begin to state that over on their end, they're dealing with CCG. However, it seems like they know exactly what's going on and that they are quickly becoming overwhelmed. The Ataru units are here, and they are quickly fighting them off, and hurting them in battle. They've already lost two to three ghouls, and those numbers quickly keep rising. Momo stating that Eto is already fighting off against the Ataru, or the armor guys. It seems like the gear keeps getting better. Now, Midoriya, he goes to jump into the air as he smashes into a building and begins to run along the side of it, launching offwards as debris gets sent flying away, trying to head in that direction. Now, as he's directly in midair, he's jumping back and forth between buildings, on the walls, Yoshimura making a bit of a debut. Now, with that being said, Midoriya, he simply encounters something. Whenever he's directly in midair, he does actually see a shine on the ground, looking down for a second and immediately dodging upwards. Where his head was, he quickly moved his torso, as a beam of light comes piercing straight through the air and hitting Midoriya directly into his right shoulder, blowing off this fake arm. The one that he had on, right above his actual right arm. As Midoriya, whenever he goes to ground to their building, he begins to slide downwards. And he can quickly hear another piece of that sound, before simply throwing his body backwards against the building. As he flies backwards and downwards into the next one. Before another blast can be seen spraying through that building and trying to cut into this other one. Now, Midoriya quickly jumps out of the building, and is flying his way down towards the ground. As with his actual right arm, he goes to throw it outwards and smack this thing away. Whatever it was as it sends a large blast flying. The man then throwing up his left arm and stabbing Midoriya through his hand. Or at least slicing into it whenever he tried to jab directly into his face as it cut through part of his hand and part it way into his knuckles. Midoriya simply being a bit enraged. As this is the other guy. Now. The owls, they are all here. And the CCG is quickly sending out more and more units. They are trying to be deployed. However, there is a bit of a problem. They are beginning to stretch themselves a bit thin. And some of their older investigators are being sent off to fight off against an owl. Now, the two owls are taking up a majority of these guys. While Midoriya is simply fighting Amari alone. 
now. This is their second battle. And well, this is a bit interesting. Amari quickly tries to blast Midori into his guts, and try and stab into him with his blade, simply trying to slash upwards directly at his face. As he cuts off a piece of the owl, the owl mask, right up to that bend right there. Now, with that being said, this is a simple battle. Midoriya does not know he is facing off against the current One-Eyed King, simply thinking that this is a dove. As Midoriya does actually get sent flying backwards, and simply just stabs his hand directly into the ground, before looking up at the man, who tries to blast away at Midoriya once again with his weapon. Now, Midoriya dodges to the right, the man simply still trying to blast and follow him before Midoriya simply stops, and completely throws off this armor, before jumping over the beam, and feeling it actually gets him in the back of his left hamstring. It burned through part of his skin and part of the muscle in the back of his leg, but it's going to heal right before he hits the ground. To which it does, Midoriya being able to land, quickly turn and try and rush forwards. The guy being able to throw out a few of these knives. He is heavily armed with Quink's weaponry, or Kagune weapons. As he's trying to fight off against Midoriya, one on one, he wanted to gauge this owl. He was brought in specifically because he's the best investigator. In fact, you could call him the number one in their rankings if you're going by hero standards. Now, Midoriya simply does recreate the giant arm. As soon as he does that, he immediately is able to bring up his hand and these weapons do stab directly into it. Midoriya quickly just flexing the muscle as these weapons go shooting out, one hitting the ground and one being sent flying throughout the air. As Midoriya rushes forwards and tries to sock the man directly in the face, getting in with hand-to-hand -hand combat. The man simply being able to dodge to the left and sock Midoriya directly into his face by simply curling his fingers and smacking him directly in the palm with the base of his hand. Smacking him directly in the nose with the base of his hand, that is what I meant. Sorry. Now, these two do go back and forth. Midoriya beginning to get a bit angry. At the same time, he is confused. This investigator is actually pretty good, and it's the one time he actually hasn't killed anyone in a direct confrontation. As he just shouts that Amari is holding back, before simply smashing his hands directly into the ground, and his Ukaku wings forming, blasting directly at the guy as he brings up the Quink's weaponry. As he begins to try and blast away it and trying to block it with his sword as a few of them actually do get past, being able to cut into this man's arm and actually almost get him in the face. He was able to move his head, but it was able to slash into his cheek. And as soon as he took his eyes off of the battlefield, Midoriya rushed in, as he's directly right in front of this man, bringing up both of his hands and smacking him directly in the face, hitting him with a hard uppercut. Now, with that being said, Midoriya, he is unaware of what's going on. He's too engrossed in the battle to be listening. Now, the CCG, they are quickly beginning to take on the owls. Now, the older Yoshimura, he is beginning to get a bit pushed. Him going a lot further with his abilities and fighting as hard as he can. He was able to take down roughly about two to three investigators, while the other ones, they are putting their suits into overdrive. And right now, he's basically playing a bit more tactical, staying away from these men and actually leading them towards the power plants, trying to do this right.
down. As soon as he does get to the power plant, Eto does see him, along with Momo. Eto's too busy, and Momo, she's mainly trying to focus on what she's doing, taking her attention away from this very delicate process, and simply trying to help Yoshimura, jumping in with her own Ukaku, beginning by letting out a large blast of these weaponry, and rushing in. As soon as the investigators try and rush Yoshimura with their weapons, some of them are caught off guard by the surprise spikes flying throughout the air. Her then being able to rush in and immediately quickly blitz them, slashing to the back of their armor as Yoshimura quickly throws out his hands. Being able to impale both of these two on his arms before quickly ripping out their entrails. The two men dropping to the ground as their suits are already at critical mass and at their limits. Yoshimura then kicking one of them directly into the distance, as as they fly through the air, their suit explodes, and the other one on the ground, he begins to explode as well, Yoshimura quickly grabbing Momo and wrapping his arms around her, and two, along with his Kagune, quickly covering her in a giant bubble, as the thing explodes, it's directly impacting most of his back as he quickly unwraps it and begins to breathe very heavily, before simply just grunting his teeth, bringing up his hand and pulling out a piece of shrapnel directly from his back. And Momo simply takes her eyes onto the battle going on with Eto. She is quickly turning into something else. She is going further and further and further, turning into one of those ginormous beasts who lose control over Akakusha. Now, she is fighting with all she's got, and she's quickly losing this battle. Yoshimura quickly jumping in to help his daughter, as he's able to simply beat down and actually surprise these investigators. They were too focused on one of the owls to recognize another one. Another one, though, was able to quickly understand the situation, turning his attention away and throwing out his weapon. This being able to try and hit Yoshimura. It was able to stab him directly into his arm, piercing through the one that was above his shoulders and then directly into his actual body. Going through that and actually trying to pierce directly into his ribcage, to which he simply pu punched the man with a backhand and began by breaking the, we breaking the weapon into pieces, pulling it straight through his arm, then doing it to his actual one before ripping the piece out of his ribcage, and using it to stab a man directly into the neck, since these suits don't cover your face. And, surprise surprise, design flaws are very much present to these things. Now, with that being said, this battle wages on, meaning the ghouls at the power plant trying to help out. However, Momo took her eyes off of this very delicate process, regulating power flow, as it is being sent too far to one side of the city, and it overloads, that part of the city catching fire, and quickly succumbing to those flames. Hero is not being able to react quickly enough to this. They were too busy trying to clear the area of civilians over on this side of town. So an outbreak over there, it's best to try and leave that to the fire department. However, quickly along the city, more places begin to sprout in flames. It is too much, however. And most of the city is beginning to surrender. Now, where is Bakugo in all of this? She is a brand new investigator. And she is simply looking down at the scene looking to see flames engulfing the city. Along with that, there are some ghouls trying to run around. Now, she's been through enough of her training to know when to defend herself. And yeah, her mission tonight was to simply try to encounter the One-Eyed King. If she can do so, 
then it will be perfect. And then she can try and get into deep cover and talk with him. However, she's already removed her tracking device, the one they embedded in her hand. And she is also still human at this point. As she eventually arrives onto the scene, seeing Midoriya, him using his cow grenade and fighting back and forth against this man. As this time when he go, d does go send a blast outwards, Midoriya kicks the thing directly upwards towards the air, simply grabbing him by his wrist and actually bending his arm backwards. The beam of light quickly turning from about 75 degrees to quickly going to 90, before going to 135 and pointing backwards. As soon as Midoriya broke his hand, he immediately punched the man in the face as the man tried to headbutt Midoriya and reached for his belt, pulling out a knife and stabbing it directly into Midoriya's gut. Midoriya doesn't even wince in pain, which surprises the man, who pulls the knife outwards and simply just keeps going over and over and over again, driving the knife deeper as his hands get covered in blood, and so does the lower part of his suit. As this is going on, now, Midori does simply recreate the two Kakuja arms onto his back, then quickly grabbing onto the man's shoulder as it begins to dig its thumb directly into the man's right arm, directly into the joint, the clawed finger making its way deeper and deeper and deeper, until there is a loud pop, and the man somehow begins to scream out in pain, to which Midoriya immediately bites directly into the man's left eye as he's trying to get the eyeball, trying to dig his way deeper and overpower the man. Now, the man pulls out the knife and immediately throws back his arm, spinning it in his hand before simply driving the knife into Midoriya's left eye, and pushing it deep. Midoriya simply just letting go of the man's face as this Kakuja arm rips off his left arm with as much force as it can. Midoriya simply falling backwards, and then so did this man, Amari. Now, they are trying to get a response from Midoriya. He has not responded. This is bad. They have lost the power plant. Their plan is already going to hell. This is not going to work. Now, this is whenever, surprise, surprise, Someone else does pick up on Midoriya's comms. It is Bakugo, as she simply just states that Midoriya, he is in a lot of trouble. She's not sure if he's alive or if he's dead, but he just had a fight with senior investigator Amari. Them being confused as to why she said it like that. Her just saying that she has been sort of given a bit of a deal. She was supposed to make contact, but whatever just happened to him is bad. Try and come here, and I was just trying to explain to them that this guy got away. Alright? Now, that is whenever Eto quickly smashed her hands into the ground, before bringing them up to the head of her Kaguja, before pulling it off of as hard as it can and sending it flying away, as the thing begins to be destroyed, and the Kaguja head, it disappearing before she's quickly just flying throughout the air, creating her cow grenade and quickly throwing it outwards, and grabbing it along the buildings, recreating it and immediately just running along. Now, as that does happen, she immediately smashes downwards onto the area. Immediately seeing Midori with a knife in his eye, she runs forwards and immediately grabs him and picks him up. However, she does hear something investigators. Her quickly looking at Bakugo and telling her sorry, along with destroy the earpiece, before quickly backhanding her as hard as she could, or at least enough to make it look believable, as she gets sent flying into the ground, smashing and rolling before jumping upwards and hitting a wall, and actually hurting part of her rib cage, breaking one rib, and bruising five, along with at least hurting her arm, 
her getting back up and simply shouting bastard before trying to let off an AP shot with her hands. She obviously does not go full power. Since she is pointing in the direction of fellow investigators, I put that in air quotes, and quickly just aims upwards as the thing gets sent flying away, everyone watching as she's quickly actually hitting some of her, tar some of her marks. The further away her target gets though, the worse her aim becomes. As she quickly runs over and tries to see if Investigator Amari is alive. And sadly, he is. Her thing for a split second shit. Before at least trying to acknowledge that they need an ambulance. Now, with that being said, I do believe that that does give a brief explanation on the operation. Now, Eto does explain that that is how it actually went down. However, Bakugo simply did this. She explained that the one-eyed owl was apprehended by another owl. She barely mentioned herself in the report. And, well, anything that does incriminate her with work with us, she's trying to avoid. So I guess that gives you a rundown, Hamadoria. I guess so. Then again, it does explain something. What does explain? I don't know. This weird thing. Did she ever own a red dress? Now, Momo stays silent. Midoriya is actually remembering. That is not good. Nothing about that is good. So, what does that mean? He's not even supposed to be able to remember the amount of, well, the way the knife was driven into his brain. That was too deep. Legally, they probably would have been able to just classify him as brain dead. He was in a coma for a couple months after that, too. This is actually beginning to get a bit annoying. Now, they simply explain to Midoriya exactly what happened afterwards. Now, with that being said, I do hope you guys enjoyed. And I hope you actually liked the way I choreographed that. Because that was all one solid take. Now, I'm proud of myself because that means my breathing has gotten a lot better. However, it is still acting up a little bit. So let's see if I did that perfectly fine without any mistakes, because if I did, I would be very proud of myself. Oh.